Hello, let's read uh, Psalm 73, verse 23. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. This is a word of prayer. The psalmist is talking to God. Yet I'm always with you. You hold me by my right hand. Psalm 73 is famous for its uh, words of protest directed to God that the wicked have a better destiny. It isn't fair, we say. There's no fairness in the world. And that can lead us into an embittered spirit. It can lead us into grief. But when we seek the Lord, and the psalmist says, and then I got into your sanctuary, and I started praying. And he found healing from these thoughts and feelings that he was having. God touched him as he can touch us and bring us the healing that our soul needs so that it can go back to its rest and to its health. Every word counts. And the verse starts with this very important word, yet. I prefer the translation that brings nevertheless, because it's longer. So we can say, nevertheless. Yes, the world is unfair. Nevertheless. Yes, there is injustice in the world. And nevertheless. Yes, I do not have the life that I think I deserve. And others who do not deserve it have it. And nevertheless, every word is significant. We do grieve, and yet, and yet, we experience sorrow. And yet, we must remember that we live in a world in disorder. We live in a world which we call a fallen world. Things are not as they were supposed to be. And yet I am, in spite of all the disorder that is in the world right now, in spite of all the unfairness and injustice, yet I am. Nevertheless, I still exist. Not only I am alive, but I will persevere. I will not despair. I will not drown in the midst of my grief. I am still here. What a blessing to be able to say that. I'm still here. I'm standing firm and I will persevere. But the psalmist says, and yet, I am always, always, at all times, whatever happens, I'm always with you, with Christ. Always, I am with Christ. And he is with me. Always. I'm not alone with myself. Sometimes I'm not a very good company to myself. Sometimes you are not a very good company to yourself. But you're not alone with yourself. Like that person who wanted to find some relief. So she went into a vacation, but she forgot that 
she was going to be with herself there as well. Because she was there. Are we going to be like the famous Baron of Munchausen? Have you heard of him? An Austrian literary character. He said that he was drowning in a swamp and then he pulled himself up by holding his hair and then he pulled himself by dragging him by the hair out of the swamp or as someone said can a soldier lift himself up by his own bootstraps no we need to be always with christ we cannot pull ourselves up but christ he's always with us we need to be with Christ. And yet, I am always with you, the psalmist says. Christ, the man whose heart knows what it means to suffer. Man of sorrows. He who carried away our sins. He who bears all our sorrows. Christ, who is also our God. Yet, I'm always with you, Lord. I'm always with you, continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You hold me, Lord. You hold me. You hold me tight. You hold me by my hand. You hold it firm and you'll never let me go. You will never let me go. You teach me that my sorrow has become your sorrow. All my sorrows, they are now your sorrows. Because you have taken my sorrow into your heart, Lord. And I praise your name because now we share my own sorrows. And you hold me firmly by my right hand. So now I ask you, dear sister, dear brother in Christ, who is listening to me, who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Well, the answer is, you are the one whom God holds by his right hand. Do not forget that. You are the one who God holds by your right hand. I am the one on whose hearts and lips God has laid this confession of trust. Yet, I'm always with you. You are the one on whose heart and lips God has placed this confession of trust. I am with you, Lord, always. You hold my right hand and you are walking with me. God bless you.